Mega Man X already had two games on Super Nintendo, so why not a third? Mega Man X 3 is in a similar vein to X2. It's still got all the same core gameplay, but not remembered as much as X1 or even X2. Just another it exists kind of game. And honestly, I'm not sure if people even like X3. I've heard some people say it's good, but I've heard other people say it's bad, so I don't know yet. All I do know about the game is it is super hard, apparently. Fun. I attempted to play X3 back when the Legacy Collection came out, but I didn't like it. I don't remember why. I think I hated the stage design and thought the music was annoying. But that was like five years ago. I might as well have never played X3 before. Gotta try my best to go in with an open mind, you know? Oh god, this collection is five years old. I am turning to dust. Well, I'm not getting any younger. Is X3 bad or was I stupid and just wanted an excuse to go straight to replaying X4? Hopefully the latter. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, after having just played the game, I don't remember the plot at all. So, spoilers, this plot barely exists. Not that it matters. Anyway, this dude named Dr. Doppler figured out how to suppress Maverick tendencies to prevent Reploids from going Maverick in the first place. This clearly doesn't work, and Dr. Doppler makes a cult in a place called Doppeltown, a perfect utopian community. So you know it's awful. All of the Mavericks that are supposed to be neutralized started rioting, and X and Zero have to go stop them. Headquarters of the Maverick Hunters gets raided, and they try to set up this you can't trust anyone kind of subplot, but it doesn't go anywhere, and I have no idea who this Mac guy is. Let's say he's Steve Jobs. Mac kidnaps X and you get to play Zero to go rescue him. It's so sad that Steve Jobs died of Ligma. Yeah, this is the first game where you can play as Zero, and it's not as cool as it sounds. This is not Mega Man X4 Zero or Mega Man Zero Zero. Zero and X3 is exactly the same as X, but he has full health and a fourth level of Buster Charge that has him use a Z Saber, and it kills basically everything. The way it works is that you can call Zero anytime by pressing R on the pause screen. I figured it's basically an easy mode that lets you get past more difficult sections early on. That's fine. I tried switching a Zero to fight Blast Hornet, knowing I could easily win if I had a little more health, but it turns out that you can't use him during boss fights, so I don't know what the point of this is. On top of that, if Zero dies, he dies permanently. This dude has a permadeath mechanic attached to him, and suddenly, I don't care. I completely forgot that you can play as him by the end of the game, because there's really no point in doing so. The stages in X3 are shockingly one note. There really isn't anything interesting going on in them. Take Blast Hornet's stage. It's this shipping yard warehouse kind of place. Aside from these exploding boxes or these falling boxes, there isn't any kind of unique mechanic to make it stand out. And that goes for most of the stages. They're all just kind of straight past the end without any kind of gimmick to shake things up or any memorable set pieces. The previous two games at least had something interesting to make each stage stand out. Armored Armadillo had the rail cart thing. Boomer Quanger was really vertically oriented. Flames stack had a volcano tie that you had to outrun and those beetles that destroyed walls. Crystal Snail had crystals that could slide and some that could be destroyed. Overdrive Ostrich had a vehicle section. Stuff like that. At best, X3 has Toxic Seahorse with an underwater section and Blizzard Buffalo with ice physics. And it's some of the worst ice physics I've ever seen in a game. Your acceleration is way too fast. You go from stop to zoom, like instantly. Even air dashing doesn't cancel out your momentum. Th that doesn't make any sense. There's no stage in X3 that I particularly disliked, but it's hard to pick a favorite just because of how unmemorable the individual stages are. I guess Tunnel Rhino stood out the most, but it was mainly because it was noticeably harder than the rest of the stages. It also went an annoyingly long time in between checkpoints. Like, those are the only things that really stuck out. Although there is a system kind of like the X-Hunters. Basically, there's these two mercenaries named Bit and Bite that have been hired by Dr. Dauber to kill X, but also Vile's there too. I'm just calling them the X-Hunters too because Bit and Bite, but also Vile is a mouthful. Bit and Bite are required. I think Bit shows up during your third stage, and I keep seeing that Bite is supposed to show up at the sixth or seventh stage, but he showed up at the eighth for me. I don't know, there's surprisingly little information about this game online. Point is, Bit and Bite are required. You will fight them at some point and die because they're pretty hard, but if you land the final hit with their weakness weapon, they die permanently, and you don't have to fight them in the final stages. They get replaced by a different boss. Bit and Bite are kinda neat. The idea is that they're bosses that you end up fighting on different stages depending on when you did what stage. That's some nice replayability. They feel like an improved version of the X Hunters, and they don't even change the ending at all. At worst, you just fight them a second time, they die anyway. Vile is a different story. Okay, so in order to fight Vile, you need to find this random ass teleporter in one of three stages, but you need to do this before you defeat both Bit and Bite, and ideally after you've beaten Crush Crawfish or Neon Tiger so you don't have to fight him a second time. Then you play through this Metroid ass escape sequence because he makes the factory explode, which I am down for. So Vile is optional and more complicated, but hey, at least it doesn't involve hidden values that the average player one of the patients will figure out on their own. The X Hunters 2 definitely have better execution than the first. It still retains 
that stage to stage element while also ditching any hard to figure out mechanics. If you don't know what you're doing, then you just end up fighting them a second time. Not much changes. It's more fun for me that way. I'm actually already starting to run out of stuff to talk about, so upgrades. Aside from the heart tank and crushed crawfish, nothing's too weird to find. It's just that some things can be hard to figure out on your own. Like this heart tank is so easy to miss, it's almost comical. Although I'm not sure how you were supposed to figure out that the charged triad thunder destroys certain blocks. Or just regular looking blocks. Like, you know, what is going on in crushed crawfish's stage? The charged gravity well is like this too, it's used to get the body armor and nothing else. Again, how are you supposed to figure out that this one weapon makes this single specific platform float? X3 is in the same boat as X2. If you know where everything is, it's easy to get. It's just difficult to figure out where everything is without a guide. The armor parts are mostly the same as X2, but with some nice improvements. Except the arm parts, which are still the same as they've always been. Instead of a radar thing, the head parts tell you what collectibles you haven't found on the stage select and on a map screen in the beginning of the stage. That really helps give you a general idea of where everything is, even if it can still be hard to figure out what to do anyway. The body armor also gives you more invincibility time on top of increasing your defense. The leg parts probably have the biggest upgrade from last time, since you can now air dash straight upwards. You have to get used to it though, it's not a straight up double jump, you have to hold it down for a bit. It's a nice addition, it's just that it's not as smooth as the rest of the controls are. Although I get why it's like that. In addition to the normal armor system, there's also new enhancement chips to further upgrade your armor parts. They're in pink capsules instead of blue ones, which is very important to know. The body ship further reduces the damage you take, the leg ship gives you another air dash, the head ship restores your health and sub tanks when you're standing still, and the arm ship is a little more complicated. I think how it works is that when you take damage from projectiles, it charges up a special weapon that lets you fire charge shots instantly. It's kind of weird, but also kind of useful sometimes. You need the base part before you can use this chip, so you need the leg part before you can use the leg chip, for example. The catch for all of this is that you can only use one at a time, so I have to pick which one you like most based on your preference. It's a cool system that completely falls apart in practice. Because what the game doesn't tell you is that if you get all four blue capsules, all eight hard tanks, all four sub tanks, and all four right armors, I'll get to that in a bit, and go down this hole in the first Doppler stage with full health, then you get access to the hyper chip, which just gives you all four chips at once. So, if you know about this, there's no reason to use any of them. Because here's the thing, each one's useful, yeah, but they're not useful enough on their own to make a difference before the Doppler stages. By the time any of these start to make a difference, you can just get all of them. There's an objectively correct choice, which undermines the whole point of only being able to use one at a time. It feels like those people that use all three starters in a Pokemon game. Sure, there's a risk versus a reward. You either get slightly stronger now or become god tier powerful later, but again, they won't help that much until you can get the hyper chip, so why bother using any of the other chips? Granted, I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be a secret. Like, this is the most playground rumor ass thing I've ever heard. Up there, with jumping off this random legend armor and armor dealer multiple times, you got a Hadouken that one shots any enemy in the game. This series gets insane, man. The only reason why I got the hyper chip was because I knew about it. It was one of the few things I didn't know about this game. But when you know that you can do this, there's no reason not to. The only annoying part about the hyper chip is that it also requires you to get all four right armors, something that is otherwise useless. Unlike the other games where right armor is just something that you can find in the stages, you have to unlock them in X3. So whenever you find an armor station, you can use any ride modules you found. But first you need to find the Chimera armor and Blast Hornet stage, which also requires it to be Tunnel Rhino. Then you can use up to four different ride armors. The problem with this is that there isn't really much of a difference between them. The standard armor is basically the same as the next one, not much to say there. With the Kangaroo armor, I don't know what the difference is. It seems to jump about the same height, maybe the punches do more damage? I have no clue. The Hawk armor shoots homing rockets instead of having a punch. Neat. It also has an air hover if you hold down the jump button. Wait a minute, didn't the right armor next do have those spike punches? Because it could also hover in the air. Did they just split that into two separate armors? Why? Once you get Kangaroo or Hawk, there's no reason to use the normal armor, and each one of those is just the worst version of what was an X2. The frog armor at least works underwater, but it sucks on land, so it's just situational. It's used in like two places. I don't know what the point of the Chimera armor is. The ride armor was fine before. They're not even used to get any upgrades, except like two heart tanks, but you can use any ride armor for that. You don't need the specific ride armors for anything. I think you're supposed to use the Hawk armor to get the head ship, but even then, if you got the leg parts, it's pretty easy to just air dash to it. These armors only use to get chips, which again, you can just get the hyper chip instead. These things just feel like busy work, you really don't need them. The end game this time is a bit of a weird one, because unlike X2, I use a guide the whole time, so 
I did everything. I killed every member of X Hunters 2 and got the Hyper Chip and the Z Saber. Yeah, for some reason, if you switch to Zero and kill this unassuming mini boss as Zero, Zero goes out of commission for the rest of the game, but X gets the Z Saber. A fourth level of Buster Charge that kills every boss in like two hits. Keep in mind that this is the only boss in the game that you can even fight as Zero. How are you supposed to find this? Again, I don't know. Because as it turns out, when you have both the Hyper Chip and the Z Saber, the end game is a complete joke. You take very little damage, you can refill all your sub tanks by standing there. Double air dash is really help with the trickier platforming, and the only boss that's kind of hard is the second Sigma phase. And that's only because his hitbox is so small that it's really hard to land the Z Saber shot. I heard X3 was really hard, but as it turns out, you can make it the easiest X game so far. I'm sure it's much harder without all those extra super upgrades, but I actually kind of liked how much of a power trip it ended up being. For most of the boss rush, I didn't need weapons, I just needed a Z Saber. Not that I use them that much anyway, the spinning blade was just about the only consistently useful one. Plowing through everything in my path was actually pretty fun. Like, I'm glad I followed a guide this time, this was the ideal X3 experience for me. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the actual ending. Dr. Doppler was actually being mind controlled by Sigma, whose main form is apparently a virus, and he's the one who was behind everything. Damn, that's crazy. X beats him up, Doppler sacrificed himself to save X, we live in a society, to save mankind he must destroy Zero, the end. Wait, 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 where'd that come from? Am I going insane? They never mention this in X3 anywhere. I know this becomes important in X5, but like, this is kind of out of nowhere, what? If you beat the game without Zero dying and without getting the Z Saber, Zero takes down the Sigma virus instead, so I'm assuming the Zero gets infected unbeknownst to everyone else. That's my best guess. Maybe it was a mistranslation somewhere? I don't know. I've stopped caring. Also, why are there no staff credits? That's so weird bullshit. People worked hard on this. I don't care about what the enemies are called. Who made this Capcom? I wanna know. They did a great job. At this point, the only thing I'll have to talk about are the ports of these games. Okay, I lied. I said I was going to talk about this during X2, but then I remember that X3 is a PS1 version for some reason, so better talk about it here. Which, by the way, wasn't released in North America. It was released in Europe and Japan, but not North America. You know, it's pretty funny that it starts off with an anti-piracy PSA because I literally couldn't play it in English otherwise, at least on PS1. Anyway, I don't like this version of the game. The graphics are untouched, that's fine. But they went and replaced most of the sound effects, and it's not like it was all the original sound effects at a higher quality. No, these are brand and new. They just don't have the same impact as the SNES sounds. Just listen to the boss doors closing. The music definitely has it worse. They made new remixes for all the tracks in the game, and they are not faithful at all. Here's Blast Hornet's stage. Where's the guitars? It barely even sounds like the same song. I should mention that I didn't do a full playthrough on PS1, I just kinda played for 20 minutes to see what's what. The same goes for the other versions I'm talking about. And so I looked up the PS1 version of the first Doppler stage, because this goes hard on Super Nintendo. But then you get to the PS1 version... ...and it sounds like this, and it's just so weird. Did they even listen to the original tracks? The PS1 version also has FMVs for the boss intros, which is cool, but they also forgot to explain the story. There's this whole intro cutscene on a Super Nintendo that tells you what's going on, but on PS1, they just skip straight to the raid on the headquarters of Maverick Hunter. What's happening? Please explain to me what's going on, I'm begging you. The PS1 version is a pretty neat curiosity, but it's the worst version of the game in my opinion. You even have to deal with PS1 load times. It's not a bad way to play the game, but with how easy it is to play the Super Nintendo version, just play that instead. You're not missing much going out of your way for this. Next up, we've got the X Collection on PS2 and GameCube. I heard this collection was bad, but I don't know why. <laughs> the main thing I heard about it was that it had awful input latency, but it doesn't. The input lag is fine, it's about as responsive as you'd expect it to be. And keep in mind that I was playing the GameCube version on an HDTV through two rounds of capture card pass-through. This is like the worst case scenario for this kind of thing, and it felt fine to me. The X Collection has X1 through 6, including the PS1 version of X3, and they added save data to X1 and X2. I don't personally like that version of X3, but I fail to see how this is a bad collection. They even removed the slowdown in the SNES games and improved the load times of the PS1 games. I also really like how 
how they updated the SNES games logos to be more consistent with the PS1 games and the game select screen. It's a weirdly nice touch. Like, if this was 2006, I would tell you to play this release, because as far as I can tell, it's the best version of these games after that point in one complete package. But this isn't 2006, and you probably shouldn't play it unless you emulate it, because this game did not agree with my TV at all. The signal would randomly cut out constantly, and it even looked like this on my capture card, even though it looked fine on my TV. Other GameCube games using the same setup looked fine, so I don't know what's going on with this game. I'll be honest, this footage does not look good, but it's the best I could do. I'm assuming it's because it's playing the game in 240p mode, which is the same resolution as the original games. But modern TVs don't seem to like that, so this happens. This kind of stuff happens sometimes when you play on a display it wasn't designed for. Stuff like this is why CRT filters exist. That's probably my only real issue with it. It would have been nice if they upscaled the games to 480p. I think Resident Evil 2 did that. If you have a CRT, there's nothing wrong with this collection. If you emulate it, there's nothing wrong with this collection. But realistically speaking, you'll probably be playing the X Legacy Collection. This is the most recent release of the X games. It's just about the best way to play these games, but I played X 1 through 3 on Beast Nose instead, because XLC doesn't have integer scaling for some reason. Like, look at this. You can't usually tell that much, but Mega Man is one of the few games where you absolutely can. The health bar segments are uneven, and it just looks gross. This is the default, and you can't turn it off. Like, you go into the screen settings and... Uh-huh. How, how long has this been here? The game's still on 1.0.0. It never got updated. It's been here this whole time? Are you telling me that I emulated these games instead of using an official release because I was too lazy to check if it had this? I swear I'm going insane. It didn't used to have this. You have to believe me. Now that I'm mentioning this, does anyone actually care that I emulated these games instead? It's the same game in the end of the day. Well, I should be talking about the X Legacy Collection. So, these are the best way to play these games then. It still has the SNES slowdown because it's emulating all the games, but it's not really a big deal. The only thing it's missing is save states. Like, seriously, just do what the first classic Legacy Collection did and give us a single save state if we need it. It kind of adds save data to the SNES games by letting you save a password, but it doesn't and save how full your sub tanks are or button mapping, which is really irritating. You also can't use the back triggers in the SNES games for some reason. Surely it can't be that hard, right? I can do it on B SNES, I can do it on SNES 9X, I can do it on Wii U Virtual Console. Why not here? They didn't fix this with the Zero Legacy Collection either. You can change the button mappings in the console's home menu, but you should need to do that on a system level. It's also weird how they didn't include an option to play the PS1 version of X3, even though they have a PS1 emulator in the same collection. Maybe they didn't think enough people would care, but it's still a weird thing to leave out. These issues are fairly minor, though. I don't really have much to say about this. Video game's good. Just remember to turn off the Vaseline filter. Like, seriously, what's with collections insisting on using screen filters for pixel art games? It always looks bad. No, Capcom. I'm not impressed by your high-resolution filter. It just makes it look worse. Anyway, I was planning on using XLC for X4 onwards because of the faster load time, so the fact that I'm an idiot doesn't really change anything past this point. Let's circle back to Mega Man X3. I was surprised by this one. While the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay has been there, done that at this point, the overall package was pretty enjoyable. What can I say? I had a fun time finally getting to this one. I think I liked it more than X2, actually. Which is pretty funny. I didn't like the game back when I first played it, so I wasn't looking forward to getting to this. I had a bit of a let's get this over with kind of mentality in the back of my head. But once I sat down and gave it an honest chance, I had a pretty great time. It's kind of a shame that barely anyone talks about X3 because there was a lot of fun to be had here. Although maybe people tend to skip over this one because of how damn good X4 is. But we'll get to that next time. So until then, it's been fun. Take care, everyone.